Facebook, Chef Ashley here at Adventure in the Cooking Lab with our next segment of United We Eat. And this week we are traveling to the great state of Hawaii. So when you think about Hawaii, what do you think of? You probably think of something tropical. So tropical fruits, maybe pineapple and coconut, guava, passion fruit. Um, but there is a really rich culture of food in Hawaii, one of our own states, that has ingredients that you might not even think of here. So we have things uh, like poi or spam masubi, which is um, fried spam and it's wrapped with seaweed on uh, sushi rice, kind of like sushi. Um, so there are tons of different kinds of food that you'll find in the great state of Hawaii. But today we wanted to focus on something that was sweet. It's Friday and I like to do baking things on Fridays. And so we're going to be making banana bread with coconut and pineapple. So it's kind of a twist on that, a Hawaiian twist on that. So I got um, a blessing from my friend Moana who lives down in Hawaii. She said it sounds great. And so we've got this recipe and we're ready to get started. So of course we're going to wash our hands. I just washed mine. So if you haven't done that, make sure you wash your hands. And then we're going to go ahead and get started. So Chef Kenny is filming. He can answer any questions you might have, any comments you want to relay. Hello. Let us know. He's here. And he definitely wants to eat some banana bread. So Absolutely. Gonna so we're going to get started with a couple eggs. Um, another trick uh, that I would like to share with you guys is when you're baking or you're cooking, I always just have an extra bowl to throw things like eggshells and banana peels in. So I've got an extra bowl here and I'm just going to be tossing stuff in to make it a little bit easier. So, we're going to start with our eggs. When cracking an egg, you're going to go onto a flat surface, tap it once, give it a good tap, and then you're going to take your two thumbs and pull your egg apart just like this. So we've got three eggs for our recipe today. When you're baking, you want to keep all of your wet ingredients and your dry ingredients separate, so we're going to start with our wet ingredients first. So three eggs. Right in. And then after you add eggs, you always have to give your hands a rinse. We want to keep it safe. So I'm going to pop on over. Wash your hands real quick. These are some of the ingredients, guys. Extra extracts, sugar, flour, cinnamon, some bananas back there. All right, and then anytime you're working with eggs, um, I like to give them a whisk before I add other ingredients so that they can become well incorporated. So I'm gonna give them just a little whisk. When you have a nice big bowl like this, it's easy to get a nice whisk. All right, just like that. And now we're gonna go to our banana. So when you're making banana bread, any other time I would have a ton of brown bananas. They're like always on my countertop at home. These aren't so ripe, but they're still going to be really good. And our recipe calls for two cups of mash, which is going to equal about four whole bananas. So if you have the really brown ones, of course that's great. But if you have some that aren't as ripe, it's still going to work just the same. And so what I like to do is kind of break it up into smaller pieces there, and we're going to do four bananas. If you're just really into bananas, you could add a little bit more if you wanted to, and I don't think that that would compromise your batter too much. So we've got like one more right in there. There. Um, a lot of times when I have a bunch of bananas hanging out on my countertop, what I like to do, especially if they're really brown and I know I'm going to be making banana bread later with them is I'll go ahead and take the peel off and just freeze them. Chef Kenny and I do that a lot in the summer when we're normally teaching our cooking camp so that we always have really ripe bananas to add to our banana bread recipe. Make sure you guys share this. Share this and give us some hearts and likes. Let us know you like it. Alright. I think that was three bananas. I've just been talking. Let's see. One, two, three. Yeah. Okay. I <laughs> One more. 
And then we're going to reserve one to decorate the top, but you don't have to do that. But um, if you only have like four bananas at home, then you can just reserve a little bit of that. So you're just going to simply take the back of a fork and go in there and give it a good mash. Now this doesn't, you, you don't have to like super, super mash it. I'm, I mean, unless you like to, but I think it's kind of nice to like bite into a little chunk of banana in your banana bread. So I don't worry too much about really, really like getting it into a super mashed up pulp or paste or anything. It's kind of nice when it's chunky. All right, just go for all those big chunks of banana and break those down. But they already smells good. In. You know what would make this easier is a potato. I think we have one. I, I looked for it and I couldn't find it. <laughs> I mean, you could also maybe like take a hand mixer to it, but you know what? So oh, okay. elbow grease never hurt anybody. Let's take a little bit longer, but it's, it's all gravy. It's all gravy. It's all gravy, baby. And you know, when they're super, super ripe, it's a lot easier. But you know, Instacart, they just send whenever they want to, you know? Mm hmm. <laughs> All right. So a few more big pieces to mix up there. Especially as we add our other ingredients, too. They'll kind of come apart a little more. Hi, Leslie. Hey, Leslie. Leslie does a lot of our recipes. She's obsessed with the frittata we did at the beginning, I heard. So maybe she'll make this banana bread with us too. All right. So it's looking pretty good. Of course you can keep smashing, keep smashing as much as you want to. But I think I've got all of the big chunks broken down and you kind of want it to look something like this. Okay. So in keeping with using our wet ingredients, we're going to go to oil. Our recipe calls for a cup and a half of canola oil. Um, but I really like to use coconut oil, um, so I'm going to use some of that. If you've got canola oil, that's absolutely fine too. You can do a mixture of the two. Um, so we've got pure coconut oil here. So we're going to see if we can get a cup and a half of this. And if not, we'll add a little canola. Leslie said, hey y'all, I stopped watching Cold Case Files for this. That's dedication. She loves us! <laughs> Yay! Alright, I need a little bit more, so I'm going to add just a touch of canola straight in there with the coconut. You can do a combination of the two or one or the other either way. I've seen recipes where um, if you don't want to add oil, you could substitute with um, applesauce. A lot of people do that to kind of make recipes a little healthier. So you can do that too. And we're gonna give that a mix. So we've got our mashed bananas, our three eggs, and our cup and a half of canola oil. So next we're gonna go into our extracts. I love using extracts when baking. We have like quite a collection here in the cooking lab <laughs> for all sorts of different things. So our recipe calls for a tablespoon of vanilla. Gotta have vanilla. Okay. And I'm eyeballing it. You can totally use your um, your measuring spoons if you want to. I've got coconut extract that's gonna give that that really tropical flavor. So we're going to do about two teaspoons of that straight in. And then my secret ingredient, which I'm sharing with you all, when baking banana bread, some banana extract. It just gives like an extra little banana flavor. It's really good. If you don't have that at home, that's okay. It's the secret ingredient. That's why it's not listed. Everybody has a secret ingredient. Okay? Definitely want to incorporate all of that into your wet ingredients here. So I'm just going to give it a whisk get it all mixed up oh my gosh it smells, mm, mm. It it smells so good it smells like we're going on vacation somewhere tropical all right jessica gregory says yummy hey jessica gregory it is gonna be so yummy all right so now i've got our crushed pineapple we've got eight ounces they come in these cute little cans and it says to drain 
If you have a little bit of that liquid in there, it's, it's, it's going to bake in and it won't be so bad. So I'm going to come back here, drain a little bit of that. Like I said, you don't have to go crazy on draining it. A little bit of that juice in is really good. It's about a cup or so. Eight ounces, straight in. That's where we start getting like really tropical with this. All right, so we're gonna give that another mix to incorporate well into our batter. I haven't been to Hawaii yet. I'm definitely gonna go. And I imagine everything smells like coconuts and pineapple. All right, next we've got three cups of flour. So we're ready to start adding our dry ingredients into our wet ingredients. Okay. And what I like to do when adding flour, especially when baking, is to kind of stir as I go so you don't like dump a bunch of dry ingredients right on top of the wet and then it's really hard to mix together. So we're gonna do a cup, stir, a cup, stir, a cup, stir. So we'll do one. Grab your whisk, give it a mix. And this just makes it easier. You don't want to over mix, but it doesn't take much, as you can see, to get it incorporated. All right, going in for the second. All right, mix again. And you can see mm. it's starting to come together. Absolutely. Right? One more. One more cup. You could use the sifter if you wanted to. But I feel like sifters aren't so important in breads like this. Maybe in something that you needed a, a more lighter, airy texture. But with a bread like this, you don't really necessarily have to sift it. Someone wants to know, can you substitute flour for almond flour? You know what? I have seen... A lot of recipes where they do that, but what I might would check if you're subbing in your almond flour um, on your amounts with your wet ingredients, because I think that a lot of times almond flour, kind of like coconut flour, really soak up all of those liquids. So I might just double check on if your liquid amounts would be the same. Like, and that would be maybe your oil. Maybe you might add a little bit more oil or an extra egg or something. That's a great question and. When we get finished filming, I'll check and we'll put it in the um, comment section below for you. And you may even have to put like more baking powder in to get that rise from out of yeah, the Yeah, absolutely. Um, I found that like when cooking with coconut flour, you always need to add a little bit extra because I feel like it just absorbs everything. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's a great question. Okay, so now we're going to go into two cups of sugar. I've got two white granulated sugar. sugar here. Um, if you wanted to... Do something like a cane sugar or something uh, for this step, you absolutely could. And we've got some that we're gonna top it with, but for, for baking purposes, we're gonna just be using our typical sugar. We got two cups of that. Because we gotta have sweetness in our bread. You gotta have sweetness. And I'm going to stir after a cup again to incorporate. So that's one cup. This is a half a cup. All right. Six. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited about this. Okay. Another cup. Straight in. It looks like a lot, but if you think about, this is going to make two big loaves. Um, so our sugar is going to kind of disperse through two big loaves. All right, it's coming together now. We're gonna go into our baking soda. Baking soda is gonna help it rise. And we need, let's see, one teaspoon. I always wanna double check with things like baking soda or baking powder because I don't wanna add the wrong amount. And I'm very spastic, so I have to check like five times, all right? So one teaspoon. And you see how I'm kind of scraping across the top there? So that's so you don't get any extra. We're just gonna kind of put that in there. Just like that, sprinkle it over the top and a teaspoon of salt. 
the salt will create a chemical reaction with the baking soda and will help our bread rise. All right, even it off, there we go. And I think that's all of our ingredients. Oh no, we're forgetting our cinnamon. Mm, can't forget the cinnamon. No, no. And that's gonna be a teaspoon and a half. I like to sprinkle a little on the top too. I'll show you guys that. If you've got a little extra cinnamon, if you just like love cinnamon, you could do that too. I think cinnamon and bananas are just like meant to be together. They're married. They're married. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and that is our last step there. So we're gonna go ahead and give it a nice mix. And you can see that the cinnamon starts to add a nice color to the banana bread. Just like that. Isn't that beautiful? That is amazing. Now, we've got two, two more ingredients that we have to add here. One being the coconut, and one is the optional pecans or walnuts if you wanted to. I'm gonna go nut free today. So we're just gonna add a cup of sweetened coconut flakes in there. If you're wanting to do a little bit less sugar, you could do the unsweetened and that would cut down a little bit on the sugar that you're adding. Okay, and we're just gonna use the cup we had the flour in. All right. If you really love coconut, you could throw an extra half cup in there. There we go. And straight in like that. Now I'm gonna switch to my spatula to help really well incorporate the coconut and any of that extra cinnamon hanging onto the side. And that's pretty much it. That is our batter for our banana. You can't smell it, but it smells amazing. And then as you are mixing, as you can see, I'm scraping the sides here and then making sure I'm going to the bottom and then really well incorporating any of those ingredients hanging out at the bottom. But like I said, we don't want to over mix. So that's perfect right there. All right, so now we're ready to get going on our bread loaves. These are gonna be the eight and a half by four and a half size. Some of them are a little bit bigger at nine inches. You would just adjust your cooking time just a little bit. And then I wanted to show you these cute things that Shaltuni and I find all the time, which makes cleanup really easy. And you can make individual ones so that if you wanna have it for breakfast, or throw it in the freezer to save for later, you totally can. You can find these at all the grocery stores. So if you have any extra left over, you can just pop it in one of these and throw it in the freezer. All right, so we wanna spray these down. I'm using coconut oil again. You can use any type of spray, any type of oil. Make sure you coat all the sides there. Some people use parchment paper as an easier way to get your banana bread out of there. Whatever you want to use is totally fine. All right. It looks like we might have some extra, so we might need some of those smaller ones. I'm sorry, I'm <laughs> totally spraying checking over there. All right, so I'm gonna pour slowly, and we want to get it about halfway because it's gonna rise. We added that baking soda and that salt, but that chemical reaction there is gonna rise. So we wanna do about half the loaf. And like I said, our recipe calls for the nine inch ones and these are a little bit smaller, so we're gonna have a little bit left over, which is fine. That means we get to make little extras. So I have a little bit extra here. I'm gonna grab a small one or two. And we'll just have two little extra dudes here that we can snack, which is perfect. Who doesn't like extra? All right. These, of course, will cook a lot faster, so you'll need to keep an eye on these in the oven. We're gonna go for an hour and 15 on these. These are probably be done. I would be checking them in about 30 minutes. And then you guys probably know the toothpick trick. Put a toothpick in, and if the toothpick comes out with no batter on it, that means they're done. If it's got a little batter, it needs a little bit longer. And you can just kinda eyeball that. About half there. 
That might be a little bit more than half. That just means it'll be a really extra loaf. All right. <laughs> Leslie says she'll be up here to get the little ones later. Okay, Leslie, we'll we'll keep them for you. We got you, girl. And then you can see this one's got a little bit, you know, just add a little bit to that one. It's just kind of a, you know, just a little game to get it right. Looks about even. All right. And now I'm going to show you an extra set. Chef Kenny says all the time that I'm extra. And all of my friends do. I am very extra. So I'm going to show you an extra set that's going to take your banana bread up notch. And everyone's going to be so impressed. And it's really easy. So like I said earlier, you want to um, reserve an extra banana. If you don't do this step, it's still going to turn out totally fine. But I want to show you guys something else. All right. So take your banana and a paring knife. And you're just going to kind of cut on an angle here. Just like this. And get some banana slices there. And we're going to use that to decorate the top of our batter. Now, as it rises, it'll sink a little bit, but when you bite into each slice, it kind of gives it an extra, like, banana flavor. And I think it's so fancy. So, we'll put these across the tops of the big ones. And then for these two small ones here, what you can do is take your banana like this and slice it lengthways and also place that on top. So, we're doing two different cuts here. We're cutting um, the bananas this way and then long ways. So I like to take those, just place them gingerly on top there. Or you can take these smaller ones and we're just going to kind of layer them like so like that. across the top of your banana bread. Just like this. You don't have to do this, but everyone will be mega impressed and think that you're just like the bomb for doing this. Okay? Now, um, our recipe calls for a little bit extra turbinado sugar, which is just a fancy name for pure cane sugar. As you can see, it's um, unprocessed and unrefined like our white sugar. So we're gonna take a little bit of that and sprinkle it right across the top there. It's gonna give it a nice caramelization on those bananas and a nice crunch. That. See, this is my extra step. It would be great going straight in like it was, but why would you not be extra when you just could be extra? <laughs> All right, am I right? Am I right? Okay. And then, last thing that's going to help with the color and also the flavor is we're going to take a little bit more cinnamon here. And we're just going to put it across the top here. So like I said, that's going to help with our coloring, but also add a nice little touch of cinnamon to it. How's about that? Looks beautiful. Yeah. Come on, come on. There we go. Yes! All right, that's it. So hopefully at the beginning of this segment, you preheated your oven to 350 degrees. These big guys are gonna go in there for about uh, an hour and 15 minutes. The small ones, like I said, we're gonna check those at probably about 30 minutes. What I like to do when I'm putting things into the oven, because I'm a very clumsy human being, I put things on trays so that if anything gets knocked, or if um, you fill it too full and it kind of explodes over, you won't um, have a huge mess to clean up. So I just put it on a baking pan and a three-year transform. So we're gonna throw this in the center rack of our oven and get it going for about, like I said, now I'm 15 for the big guys and the small guys about 30 or 10 minutes. Now, you know that we've got the magnet, a food magnet on our side. Uh -huh. So, we've got our big guy here. He sank a little in the middle because of the bananas, but I'm going to bring you one of the smaller ones. 
this is what they look like as they're finished. So nice caramelization on the bananas there, the cinnamon. It's just totally delicious. And I would know that because Chef Kenny and I already ate one. <laughs> <laughs> and they were great. We put a little bit of uh, uh, butter on there and it made for a really nice kind of brunchy snack. So we hope that you guys enjoyed our Hawaiian coconut pineapple filled banana bread. Thanks for joining in. If you have any questions, like the almond flour question, that was a great question. We're gonna look that up and get back to you on it. And we will see you next week with United We Eat going somewhere else across the country. So um, visit us at adventure.org and hopefully we will see you really soon.